It's a genetic component. A lot of pesticides were on that. It goes back into our gene pool. Nobody knew what it was really called back then. So I had gout. I had all of these, like, I had horrible migraines. You know, that really comes from, you know, years of... Ashley, it's so good to have you here. Um, you have created something quite unique, but... Before we talk about Prevail, can you tell me a little bit about why you created it and also like kind of like your upbringing? Because I know you have like this whole story, which makes this product very unique and also very personal to you. Yeah. So I uh, grew up with tons of food allergies and, um, you know, I back in the day, no one really knew what they were. I was on a lot of medication and, um, you know, just not really seeing any of the benefits of being on that medication. And I still was feeling sick. I, um, you know, finally realized that I had celiac in my thirties and, you know, I just thought that it was normal for people to eat pasta and their stomach to look like they were nine months pregnant afterwards. And I kept saying, you know, do you have this problem? Is this, is this, you know, normal? Is this how I should feel? So I uh, was tested and I did have celiac. I also, um, you know, had some problems getting pregnant and, and, you know, come to find out my diet was really, you know, hindering um, my ability to get pregnant. And so, you know, through a lot of trial and error, after I found out I had celiac disease, I uh, came to really rely on the paleo diet and the lifestyle because that really worked for me. So, it, you know, it, it, I had had skin tests and all sorts of things and, um, realized that I was allergic to all grains, corn, wheat, soy, dairy, um, you know, refined sugars, like all of these things that were just really creating inflammation in my body. And um, so I really, I thrived after I had um, kind of changed my diet and went on the paleo um, lifestyle. And, you know, when you're out traveling, it is really difficult to find a snack that doesn't include a top eight allergen. And also, it should taste delicious. Why does um, all of the th things out there that say they're healthy or, you know, have natural ingredients, they just don't taste good. So why should I have to suffer and um, settle for something that didn't taste really good? And um, so my husband was creating this jerky for me at home. And when I would be on a work trip, I'd be in the airport without it. And all I could eat was a banana and a hard boiled egg. And I thought, you know, there's got to be something better out there. So he took a look at the, um, you know, entire jerky space and me having my, all my food allergies, I could only literally eat two of them. All, almost all jerky out there has soy and additives, um, refined sugars, you know, they jack up the sodium. Um, if they don't have sugar, there's just a lot of really bad ingredients out there. And I was just looking for something that I could feel good about and that I could give to my kids. And so he was making the jerky for us at home. And, you know, we just really wanted people to be able to prevail through their food. So, you know, that is how um, prevail came to be. So going back, that's, a, that's like a really great story. And I, I think what, what just makes this so unique is the fact that you didn't create prevail just because you just wanted to start a business. Like this was so personal to you. This was because there was something lacking on the market. In fact, I've done a lot of searching myself because I, you know, I like to look at ingredient lists and things and I literally could not find any type of beef jerky like at, you know, all the major like, uh, yeah. you know, like Walmart and stuff like that, yeah. you know, and it was just really disappointing because you know, a lot of people, they, they ask me, you know, okay, well, you know, is this good quality or is this, or is that good quality? And I always say, it's like, if there's something that I personally would not consume that I just, I can't recommend it. Um, now I think for, there are some people that probably don't know the difference between like, you know, celiacs and then also just like a gluten sensitivity. Can you kind of sure. touch on that and let us know like what the difference is on that? Sure. So, you know, for me, just, you know, celiac disease really about 20 years ago was kind of like a new thing. Nobody had really heard about it. And, you know, if you t speak to people in Europe, they, that is really where like the founding fathers of like the kind of, um, the, where, you know, celiac was, um, kind of found out about. And the, one of the, um, professors and doctors that really took a look at it was from Italy and, you know, it, it also can stem all the way back to, you know, all the GMOs in our food here. Um, obviously, it's a it's a genetic component. I have a genetic um, tendency to, you know, not be able to process that wheat 
in my body and anything that has gluten. So, you know, for me, the reason why, you know, I am also like allergic to dairy and other things is because the molecular structure of those items is very similar to wheat. And so my body, which is an amazing, you know, machine searches out that, that ingredient and says, Oh, I bet that's wheat. I'm going to give her, you know, I'm going to send my white blood cells to try to like, um, fix that. And so what was happening is I had a leaky gut and, you know, that really comes from, you know, years of, you know, obviously back in, in the you know seventies and eighties, you know, my mom was feeding us the best that she could. It was a lot of processed food, a lot of frozen food, you know, a lot of pesticides were on that. And so I obviously had this predisposition for celiac and come to find out my mother has celiac and it, you know, kind of goes back into our gene pool. But Nobody knew what it was really called back then. People were getting diagnosed with IBS and Crohn's and other things. And, um, you know, I had this leaky gut. So all of this, these micro food particles are, you know, getting out into my body. And so my body is having an autoimmune response to that. So I'm getting hives. I'm getting, I was diagnosed with early onset arthritis. I had gout. I had all of these, like I had horrible migraines. I was getting um, cysts in my sinuses. So, um, you know, all of those things, my body was trying to fight, you know, the reaction to the food. And so once really when I was able to, you know, clear out the food um, that was giving me, you know, problems, um, you know, that was where I saw real health changes. And so when it comes to like gluten intolerance and celiac, you know, I think that that really can stem from just the, um, ingredients that when you talk about it, it's, it's things that are creating, you know, I think wheat obviously, you know, hundreds of years ago was not tainted with other things. And so over time, our bodies have become intolerant to specific things that are making us have that inflammation. So I think it's just really, and it's very personalized. Like even my children, they have both um, been diagnosed with celiac, but they both have different, um, you know, kind of inflammatory reactions to different food. Like my son can eat organic corn, but my daughter cannot eat organic corn. She breaks out in hives like immediately. And so it's really about our body's, you know, way to kind of fight things in, you just have to try to, um, find foods that for you work for you. I just want to thank our sponsor for today's video, Fort Worth Camera, located here in Fort Worth, Texas. This is actually where I get all of my gear, so camera, lighting, audio, even all the accessories. They have all the big brands so like Sony, Nikon, all of that stuff, but the customer service here is absolutely amazing. When I come here, I don't feel like a sale. I actually feel like they genuinely care. And so that's one of the main reasons. It's not just about the products that they have. To me, it's about customer service and about how they treat you. So if you're looking for a really genuine experience, check out Fort Worth Camera. When you mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm a child of the 70s and the 80s too. And I also grew up on ultra processed foods. And it's not it's not like, like there wasn't any type of uh, kind of like awareness of ultra processed foods back then. Like this was like the normal thing and we were so used to it. And so it's not like our parents were trying to do us harm. It's just that that's, you know, from all these food companies with all the packaging and the labels, yeah. we were led to believe that these were good for us. It was a marketing right. tactic, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, and I tell people, you know, it's not... So like when people say, you know, there's there's some people that will say, you know, oh, well, you know, you're fear mongering and, you know, you it's OK to have this and have that. But the fact of the matter is that these people that are eating these ultra processed foods or these ingredients, they're not it's it's not like they're just having one little thing, like one little, uh, I don't know, like low carb wrap or something that's ultra processed you know it's not it's not like they're having one thing like these people that are having you know one thing they're usually having like multiple different things and so all of these ingredients all of these processed foods these chemicals these preservatives they all add up yeah and that's what has done the damage it's not that right. you know it's okay i'll have this once a year no mm -hmm. it's like we're having this consistently every single week and right. You know, at that point, it's considered a consistent part of your diet. And, you know, I personally, you know, can attest to 
the whole ultra processed food thing and doing damage to the gut. I actually grew up with migraines. Now I know it's not yeah. as severe. Horrible you know. migraines when I was growing up. Like I was 16 and had like blackout migraines. So I, you know, why is that? Like we were just kids then. And just like you just said, you had migraines growing up. Like I, since I cleaned up my diet, I never get them. It's just really fascinating to me that food, I think just because we were never taught that as a child. And I really try to talk to my kids about it. And, you know, they're at an age now, they're 15 and, you know, all their friends are eating Takis and Doritos and all this stuff. And, you know, I, you know, have just tried to really arm them with the best defense I know how and just talk about ingredients and what makes your body feel good and what doesn't. And I agree with you that there is so much processed food that has so many additives in it that your body just doesn't even know where to start. And so, you know, that's where you're, it's becoming like a culture of, of sickness for sure. I recently, so I'm aware that in like other countries like Europe and stuff, there's a different standard for ingredients. I just saw a post just recently about like, I mean, I don't eat McDonald's, but I saw the difference between the McDonald's ingredients uh, for French fries versus like versus Europe versus the U S yeah. and it was completely mind different blowing. mind blowing i totally agree yeah and in addition i have a friend who has a wife and she she doesn't have celiac but she does have a gluten sensitivity a mm -hmm. big gluten sensitivity and so they recently went over and went to greece and she was able to eat pasta and yeah. then we got to talking about what you had mentioned, how the 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 strains basically of or the the variation of wheat yeah. in general has changed over the years, like dramatically here. Would you be able to consume something that isn't like like something in like Europe or is that, you know, something that you can't so have I as well? I would still not because I do have celiac. So it's different than a gluten intolerance, like you're saying, where they're eating the wheat here and that that gluten that is here is irritating the gut and the bowel and the whole thing. And you're getting all different types of anti-inflammatory responses. So in Europe, a lot of people that do have gluten intolerances, and then when they travel to Europe, they are able to eat a lot of those things that don't bother them. So for somebody like that, they absolutely can certainly try it and see if it works for them. For me, I, you know, I don't cheat. So there are people out there with celiac, like my mother, you know, God bless her. She just, she just sometimes, you know, eats something that I know is bad for her, but she, it's hard for her to like make that switch. So for somebody like that, I'm sure that they, you know, would, would try it and see if it worked for them. I'm sure it's not going to give the same type of response as something here, but I think that you just have to determine what is, what works for you. So I am, I do have celiac and I don't cheat and that works for me. I can tell a huge difference. Like even earlier, I had said that I had um, lots of cysts in my sinuses and that was due to all of the gluten consumption. And so they had told me, they were like, oh, your body just makes cysts. You know, you're going to have to come back here in 10 years and have these all removed again. And so I went in for like a checkup. And the doctors were amazed that I did not have one polyp, one cyst in my sinus cavity. And the only thing that I had changed was my diet. And so I think it's really about like learning, you know, listening to your body, you know, knowing what feels good to you, you know, and making those changes. It's really a lifestyle change, not really a diet change per se. Now, when you changed over to paleo, was it kind of like a gradual thing was or was it like cold turkey can you kind of walk me through some of those steps so it was really um daunting i think you know there's so much information out there and especially for me um uh, going like completely grain free i think you just have to really you know do it on your terms um you know i had small children at the time and i didn't know if they had celiac and then i accidentally had given them um you know, some baby food that had um, barley in it. And it was really interesting because their body could not process that at all. And so like their diaper came out and it was like black leaves, dried leaves. So, you know, their body could not process it. And so at that point I was like, you know, here we were eating, you know, some, you know, rice checks and other things back, you know, my kids are 15 now, but as I was trying to like gradually move out of gluten and, you know, rice and corn and all of those other different things, I had to kind of gradually do it. And I think, um, 
it's about being a food detective almost because you think things don't have soy in them or, you know, what have you. And then you eat something and, you know, that bothers you. And then come to find out you read the fine print and it's in there. So, you know, even my son now, um, if he gets some food in there, we were eating at a, you know, a clean restaurant here, a fast food restaurant here in Chicago. And they had a, like a sauce, a fry sauce that he was eating. And all of a sudden, you know, I could tell that he was, um, getting, having some issues with, you know, his body and, uh, the soy. And so I was trying, we eat, a, I know what we eat. So I'm trying to scour, like, what are we eating? That's different. What is going on? And come to find out that this sauce had soy in it. And that was bothering him. And because his body is like so free from soy, any little bit will make a change. So, you know, soy can be a um, hormone disruptor and especially in boys. And um, immediately you could tell that um, it was too much estrogen for him. And so just those little things, I think you have to kind of try to figure out what is bothering you and just really looking at the fine print. And so it was kind of like a whole lifestyle shift. Um, but I just really never, once I, once I just like cut everything out, I just never went back. And like, literally I wasn't doing anything that was like processed or store-bought. I was, um, and for a while I was doing rice milk, um, and they had a little bit of gums in there and things. And my body was, you know, I was still, you know, in my forties and I was breaking out. And so I was, I obviously ate really clean except for this milk. And so then I was like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, cut the milk out and see if, if that changes anything. And sure enough, you know, now I do my own uh, coconut milk where I, you know, make it with um, just water and organic coconut cream. And, you know, that's what I use, you know, in my coffee, I could tell a huge difference in my body just by making that change. So, you know, I think that some people it's easier for them to um, do it by baby steps and other people it's, you know, cold turkey. It kind of just depends on what, you know, is working for you and how you feel. When you created Prevail, um, can you like what led up to that? What was like that that point where you said, OK, you know what? We need to go ahead and we need to create this company because there's nothing else like it on the market. Uh, my husband liked to smoke meat and, you know, he was a kind of a self, uh, proclaimed, you know, home cook chef. And he was just making these really great flavors. You know, we've got the original, it's got cherry wood smoke in there. It's got cardamom, ginger, garlic. And then he had, you know, I really missed having like a good teriyaki style jerky. So then he worked on, you know, a paleo recipe with, uh, the arumami flavor. So it's got a little bit of orange juice in there. Um, you know, and some other, um, a coconut aminos and such. So that was really our take on like a teriyaki style jerky. And, you know, when we looked at the space, he had a couple of friends at work, he was taking it to work with them and said, Hey, what do you guys think about this? And they all, you know, they didn't have food allergies or anything. They just thought it tasted really great. So that was really kind of the game, right? Could we come up with something that actually tasted delicious? but then was good for you too, right? Had no fillers, has no cane sugar, uses, you know, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef. We actually cherry with smoke all of our product. We don't use natural smoke. We don't use liquid smoke. We um, actually cherry with smoke, um, which gives it a really like more fruitier flavor, if you will, a little bit sweeter just because it's cherry wood. It's not hickory. Um, and we wanted a product that, um, that could be for the whole entire family. So we have kids that eat it that are, you know, three years old that are, you know, they're going to preschool and kindergarten. And obviously kids that are in their teens, they use it as a, you know, protein um, replacement in their lunches, after school, after school sports. And then women, you know, women are, you know, supposed to get at least 100 grams of protein per day. And it's just really difficult to get that if you are not supplementing your diet with some type of, you know, meat, grass fed, you know, we've got 12 grams per serving. So each bag's got um, 30 grams of protein in there. And, um, I just wanted to be able to create a product that, um, help moms on the go, you know, 70% of our consumers uh, are currently women. So, you know, I think that it's, you know, they're the shoppers for the home. They're the ones that are looking out for if there's any dietary restrictions for the kids, for their spouse. And so, um, I just wanted to be able to, you know, I knew that it was, it was a, 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 a point for me that uh, was a pain point. And I was really difficult for me to find things that I could eat um, when I was out and about or if I'm traveling or what have you, I wanted something, you know, quick on the go. I always have a bag in the car with me. And um, so that was really, you know, I wanted to be able to help mothers out there that have kids that have food allergies or they have food allergies or intolerance for themselves. 
I've got a quick announcement to make. Because I know that shopping healthy at the grocery store can sometimes be overwhelming and also confusing between knowing what ingredients you should be avoiding and what foods are actually healthy, I've simplified the process and if you click the link in the description of this video, you can download my free guides. And if you're enjoying the content in this video, please make sure that you subscribe and share. One of the misconceptions that people have with like the healthier type stuff, at least initially, I think we're getting better at it now, is that they automatically assume, oh, well, you know, it's not going to be as good or it's not going to taste as good. But right. to be quite honest with you, like this is way better than any jerky I've ever tasted in my life. Like it's, yeah. it, there's, it's very, I mean, it's, it's just a unique flavor yeah. and it's amazing. And then another thing too, which I'm really, really, I'm very adamant about is like, you know, when you're dealing with like animal products, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, well, you know, the, the fact that the problem is, is that at least here in the United States, it's not that like hormones were outlawed with, you know, poultry yeah. and stuff like that. But in beef, they're oh, still yeah. allowed to have it. And right. so if you're yeah. not getting truly grass fed, grass finished beef, well, then, you know, your, your body's getting pumped full of hormones and yeah. you know it's just it's not the same like i like the fact they're using grass fed grass finished because that's something huge it's got a different lipid profile exactly. you know this is going to be something that you can consume on a regular basis and feel yeah. good about it um, well and you know the difference is too is that you can eat that and it will help you feel full and satiated but not overly full because we're not overly salted the beef is better quality. You know, there's a lot of jerky out there that's made with commodity beef with these animals on feedlots. They are not healthy by any means. They are putting antibiotics and hormones in them, just like you said. And um, they're not pastured. They're not eating grass. So they're, they're feeding them um, at the end of their lives. They're feeding them candy and soy and all sorts of crazy stuff to like fatten them up at the end. And it's just a horrible, like inhumane process. And so we're very conscious of where we're getting our meat from. You know, we're either getting it from Argentina and we're, or else we're either getting it um, from New Zealand or Australia. Um, you know, that is where, you know, the animal husbandry laws are better. Those animals are grass fed and grass finished their whole life. They are, you know, pastured and it's just, is a, it makes the product one healthier, like you said, and it just tastes better and it's more easily digestible. And I will also say too, that, you know, if, even if you get something where it says grass fed, sometimes in the U S they're allowing that meat to be finished off on grain. And if you eat that meat and you are allergic to corn, you are going to get upset stomach. You're going to get upset digestion because your body is eating what that cow ate. And so it is, it can be, um, if you're eating that all of the time, like you said, that processed food, you're just not going to feel good. And I think that's something that people need to understand, especially, you know, here, cause I've, you know, I, I, I did this post on Instagram about grass fed, grass finished beef. And I had, a, most people loved it. Right. I had more positive yeah. But then there were a bunch of people that were just like, oh, well, you know, that's that's not true. Every, everybody grain finishes. And yeah. I, you know, I know that's not true. I mean, I visited yeah. a regenerative farm here in yeah. Texas. Right. You know, and there is there's there's something quite different. They are raised completely different. They are not fed, you know, bad stuff towards the end. They're not pumped full of anything. Right. And they really do care. And, you know, it's it's there's definitely something to be said about the way the animal is treated versus like, right. I mean, with the outcome, what the yeah. outcome is for the product that we end up eating. Did you have, or did you come across any challenges when you were creating Prevail? I mean, there's always challenges when you are coming into a legacy category, right? Like the jerky, jerky has been around for ages, right? And there is one, you know, main, um, you know, company that really controls the bulk of that. And it's the very, um, you know, money is really important to, you know, grocers and to pay for all those marketing dollars. And so, you know, you really have to try to stand out in a way that is unique and different. And I think the thing that's important is that 
consumers are smarter than they were. Just like you said earlier, you know, our parents were feeding us ultra processed food, but they just didn't really know any better. And I think now we have a consumer that is really looking at the food and the supply chain and really trying to figure out, you know, what, what can I eat that makes me feel good and what tastes good and they don't want all of those chemicals and they don't want all of, of those um, additional additives and preservatives in there because it's not making them feel good. And so, you know, for us, um, it's certainly, you know, we're like the little engine that could, you know, we're, we're, you know, plugging along. And I think it's just about, you know, getting our, our voice out there and especially, you know, on podcasts like yours, just letting people know about it and know what we're doing and why we're doing it. I think, you know, the um, allergy, um, food community and people that have autoimmune disease is like 85 million people. And it's really difficult for us to, you know, find uh, protein that is not in the form of a bar and highly processed. And so, you know, we're walking past that jerky section in the grocery store and we just look at it and there's just a lot of junk in there. And then plus the, there's really literally like two other brands that are pretty healthy, but they still contain, you know, cane sugar in there and the beef is not uh, grass finished. And so, you know, you kind of have to make these compromises. And I think people are tired of making those compromises. So, um, you know, we definitely are still trying to get out there and are, are working to get our jerky out in, into more masses. I think, you know, for me, definitely a mission of mine is to, you know, make sure that we can have uh, top eight allergen free food that actually tastes delicious everywhere and have everybody be able to buy it of all all walks of life. Do you have any future plans that you can share that you're you're planning or, you know, any type of things that you have going on with Prevail? We are working um, to try to come out with a uh, we have a new flavor that we are, are working on. Um, that I think everyone will be really happy about. And I'm hoping um, that we'll be able to get it out before the holidays, but maybe not until um, the early spring. And so um, we're really, um, we're doing a taco flavor I can share with you. And then, um, and it's delicious. It tastes just like you uh, made homemade tacos. Um, and then the other thing that we are working on to try to bring um, to everybody before the holidays is a single serve pack. So, you know, I was, um, in one of the, um, club stores and they have, um, you know, Oberto's, which is a, a legacy brand that's been around for a long time. And they've got these single serve packs. So if you're a mom, you're trying to get in there and get out, trying to get something for your kids, you think, oh, I'm going to get them this jerky. Each one single serving has have 700 milligrams of sodium which is like mind blowing that that is even out there. And so I um, we really were trying to get a single serve um, out there that would just be a great grab and go quick for kids or even for yourself. You just want a quick grab and go a lot of we have a lot of um, athletes that like our product because of the tender texture and they can just pop it in their mouth and then, you know, chew it as they're exercising and it doesn't um, they don't need to drink afterwards. So I'm super excited about that. So um, that is is kind of on the horizon. I hope to have that ready out um, at least on our website and possibly on Amazon um, before the holidays and then the taco. Um, we'll see when that comes out. That sounds really exciting. I'm interested in the tacos. That that yeah, that sounds amazing. It, it's like mind blowing. <laughs> I didn't um, know if we, I would really like it. It is really delicious. Yeah. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and for someone like me, so I do a, like a lot of like lifting and stuff like that. Like yeah. this would be considered my single serving right here, that 30 right. grams of protein, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, like I said, if we're trying to get a hundred grams of protein a day in for women, like there's just no way you're getting it unless you are eating, you know, a snack like that, that's going to be, um, you know, healthy for you and taste delicious and it's protein packed. So yeah, 30 grams right there. Um, you know, it definitely helps um, whittle down that 100 grams a day. I started incorporating this as like my snack versus like my extra. Like I have, typically I have about like four meals per day. Sure. One is like that, the fourth one's pretty much like a snack. So I started yeah. replacing that snack with a package. And yeah. so not only did I feel like I wasn't, I like I wasn't as hungry during the day that I normally was, and so I was actually eating a little bit less. And within a two week time frame, I actually was able to get a little bit leaner just by sure. incorporating that. So I think that's something that I noticed right off the bat. And I think that would be something that would interest a lot of people because Absolutely. it's a great way, you know, to get that extra protein in, like you said. Um, but 
so you so you're in multiple different places i know that people can go online uh but can you share everywhere you are and where they can find you your socials and all that good stuff so you can find us um on instagram and at Preville jerky and then um we are in thrive market hungry root we're in uh the fresh market hyvee um jewel in the midwest mariano's in the midwest the Fresh Time, we're in Erewhon, Lawson's, uh, Market of Choice in the Pacific Northwest. You can certainly check our location um, on our website. We have most of those updated on there um, to see if we're in your neck of the woods. And then if we're not, we are, again, on Amazon. We are on Costco.com um, as well, which is that's a great deal. And then our website and um, Amazon. I've got a lot of people that follow me that are Costco shoppers, so that's huge. It's a that's... good one. It's a 10-pack of the original beef, and then there is a multi-pack of um, all the beef flavors that's on there. Well, yeah. Is there anything that you'd like, anything else that you'd like to share with everybody? I you know, just think that I think that the um, healthy like food community where we're all just trying to um, get out there and try to find things that make us feel good and you know put us in a different mindset in terms of how to fuel our body and do it uh, the right way so that we feel good i just um, am excited to be a part of that community and i'm glad you know when when you're building this and you are just trying to be you know i'm a mom on a mission that's just trying to put a you know product on the market i really enjoy hearing from customers where, you know, they have children that have food allergies and they couldn't find snacks for them. Or, you know, we have repeat customers. I have a woman that just, she buys 20 turkey packs every week and she eats this for her protein and she's allergic to so many different foods. And so when, you know, she sends like the sweetest little emails to me about how she couldn't find protein and it didn't taste good and it was too hard for her. And so, you know, when you get those customer um, comments, you know, that's just really rewarding for me. So thanks to everybody out there that supports our brand. I mean, it's just confirmation that you're absolutely making a change and you're doing the right thing. And you're just really creating like this big family in a sense, you know. Yeah. So that's wonderful. I really appreciate your time with me. I know time is very valuable and you can never get it back. So I know you're a busy, a busy mom, a busy wife. And I'm just really amazed with what you and your husband, Glenn, have created. And again, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be here and uh, share this with your viewers for sure. So thank you for inviting me.